Hey guys, this is Caleb with DSLR Video Shooter, and today we're going to mod this Ceramonic preamp for use with video cameras. In my last video, I showed you guys this amazing $23 preamp. We did some tests, it is awesome. I'm a big fan of this thing, except that it's meant to be used with phones, tablets, things like that, and there's really no good way to mount it to your camera. So today we're gonna solve all that and very easily mod this. So check the description for links to a few little add-ons, and without further ado, let's head over to the bench and get this puppy modded for video use. So the first thing I wanna do is open up the unit and rewire the audio cable so that we can use the headphone jack as our output to send a signal to the camera. After trying to pry the case open because I didn't see any screws, I decided to look a little further and it turns out that the top face of the unit has a sticker on it. So you can peel that off and you'll reveal three different screws. Once you remove the screws, the top pops right off. Then you can carefully remove the cable from the little insert. Now we can see the inside of the unit. And at this point, we can remove the small knob on the dial. It just slides right off and it's just sitting there. Next, I went ahead and cut the cable and removed that plastic outer layer. With that done, you'll notice we have several wires, red, white, black, and then a green wire with a braided copper shield wire around it. The reason there are so many wires is because this is designed to work with an iPhone or an Android phone. So it needs to have all these different connections that connect to the TRRS connector. Long story short, we can convert this to a standard TRS connection, which will then be fed through the headphone jack. So what you're going to want to do is take that braided copper wire that's going around the green wire and separate it. Once you've separated all the strands, twist them together to create its own wire. Now twist that copper stranded wire to the white wire. That's going to be our new ground. From there, you can connect all the other wires together. You can leave them twisted, but to ensure a strong connection, I would recommend you use some solder. I would also recommend you cut the wires a little shorter than I did. I had never opened this unit up or worked with it before, so I wanted to make sure I had a little extra length just in case I needed to wire it differently. Now we need to cover up the wire so that when we pack this all back together, it doesn't touch any other metal parts inside of the unit. Next, I use some hot glue to secure our new connection down. It's a pretty tight fit in the box. You wanna make sure it's close to the PCB board. One thing I kind of messed up on that you should avoid is gluing it near the LED light. It worked out fine in the end, but having a shorter cable or running it somewhere else would probably have worked better. Now, before we close this thing up, let's go ahead and deal with this knob. I noticed it was a little loose and really the only things holding it down are gravity and the top top case plate. So I decided just to add a little bit of hot glue underneath the cap so that it wouldn't wiggle around and there would be no play left. I ended up using a little too much so I would definitely cut it back. Now if you did put too much glue down and you're noticing that it's starting to glue everything together, just keep spinning the knob like I did here and that'll ensure that the glue touching the base doesn't glue everything fully together and you'll be able to remove it with some tweezers later. Now all that said, you could just use a tiny dot of super glue and that would probably do the trick. So with that done, we can add the top plate back on and fasten in those three screws. Next I decided to modify the sticker a little bit and I think it's a much cleaner look. Next, I wanna deal with this knob size. It's pretty small, and I'd like to have something a little longer and easier to grab onto. So I scratched the top, and this will allow the glue to bite onto something. I then took a really cheap black aluminum knob that uh, turns out to be the perfect size to go right over this. And here I just used super glue to affix it. The only thing you wanna make sure you get right is that it is centered and that the new knob indicator matches where the old knobs indicator is. After holding it down for a few seconds, we now have a really nice large knob to work with. Next, I want to add a cold shoe to the bottom of the unit, which will allow us to mount this to the top of our camera. I decided to cut off the top thread to keep everything nice and short. With that done, I glued one of the small nuts onto the threads itself and that'll give me something to glue the whole thing to the base of the unit. While that glue is drying, I also glued a female cold shoe to the top of the unit. 
This will let us mount really anything on top of the unit since we're taking up the hot shoe on top of the camera. Super glue and plastic like this actually works really well. Just make sure that you scrape or sand each of the surfaces that you're gluing together. After the glue dried for the base, I went ahead and glued that to the actual unit. With all that done, the only thing left to do was to add labels for the input and the new output. And here is the completed product. It can be mounted to the top of any camera and with a short 3.5 to 3.5 cable you can connect it and you're good to go. Having that cold shoe on top of the unit is really great because you'll be able to add either a microphone or other accessories like an audio receiver or a monitor or really anything. So that pretty much does it. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and of course check out the original video if you missed the overview of this killer little preamp. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.